Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and this has been a long time coming. This is our friend Gabe Franco. Yes, sir. Dude, number one, it's a haul for you. You come all the way up from San Diego. It's a good drive. I see stickers on your tires, so I know you showed up ready to yes, do sir. this thing. Yes, sir. Got you put, put some fresh stickers on your truck. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting you at this event briefly. You had just put your truck on your trailer, like uh -huh. you were just about to scoot out. And bottom line, dude, it's been it's been quite a while, and here we are finally doing it. Making so. it happen. You know, my thing is I never learn about vehicles before we shoot them. All I know is this thing is definitely a driver. I know you prefer being sideways rather than straight. Definitely. <laughs> it just handles better that way. Yeah. So you built this purposely, obviously, as a full drift truck. Yeah? Correct. Correct. It was originally supposed to be an autocross truck when I started the build, but as I went for a ride along with a buddy in a drift car, my mindset changed completely. Interesting. And I had to make this thing my drift vehicle. Interesting. And you have your own shop, right? That, that's what you do for a living is build stuff? Mm -hmm. So custom fabrication, do roll cages, aluminum work, stainless work, all that good stuff. Okay. Well, why don't you walk me through, what, like what year did you start with here? The truck to 77, what's left of it. <laughs> <laughs> The whole flooring, all the firewall got cut out and pushed the motor back quite a bit. Did a bunch of framework, boxed it all in, channeled it, reinforced it a bunch. Still stock frame, but just completely reworked. Exactly. It's yeah. stock frame rails that way. It could still be California legal and everything like that. It's still got, got plates and all the good stuff. Oh, because everything else about this is so California legal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it screams California, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's pull the pins and take a look. She's definitely seen a lot of road days and a lot of track days. I mean, let's be honest, dude. I watch clips of yours on a regular basis. And it's like, cool, freeway on ramp, wow. Left turn intersection, wow. Didn't you tap a, a, a wall with this thing or is it a dip? That was this truck. So before I went to the wide body kit, I had known it was coming and I kind of just was like, all right, let's go out this Sunday and get a bunch of clips stacked up so I could pull the truck apart and post them throughout the months, you know? Last clip of the day, I said one more time and ended up meeting a K-Rail. Don't ever say one more time. Yeah, you're not That's supposed to do that. That's when it always happens, I'm done. <laughs> I know we're definitely not worried about scratching the paint. No, she's rough, but luckily <laughs> it's a drift car. It's funny for me, Gabe, is I mean, obviously we shoot like crazy big dollar one-off, total, total show car builds. And then we shoot drivers and I find myself more and more being attracted to the drivers because the beautiful, opulent, insane, amazing builds, all of a sudden they become delicate. It's mm -hmm. like, wait a second, this thing's an American muscle car and yet it's like, oh, don't touch that. Right. Don't take it over 3,500 RPMs and you know, it only goes on and off of trailers. Especially when it's got the best of the best equipment on it. You want to use that stuff. Seriously. What is the engine in here? So the engine is still a small block Chevy. It's a 355. It's bored out and stroked just a little bit. It's got a cam in there. It's got camel hump heads on it, which are off like the old C28s back in the day, I believe. So they had bigger valves. Okay. It's got a little bit of head work to it, better valve springs and push rods and all that good stuff. But other than that, it's a pretty basic small block build, maybe estimated around 300 That's horsepower. It. Yeah, it's not too much to be honest. Boy, it sounds a lot nastier than that when you fire it. It's healthy, it's a good you know, small box. They yeah. do their job. And then what do you go to transmission wise on it? It's the Tremec Magnum mm -hmm. and it was rated for about 700 horsepower. And I knew this thing was only gonna be pushing 300. So I figured with yeah. all the clutch kicking and abuse I throw out, it should be fairly reliable. Yeah. And it's been in the truck for about five years now and hasn't skipped a beat. Good for you. Knock on man. wood for that Good one. For, yeah, 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 <laughs> right, dude. <laughs> so but, I can see obviously QA1 for your control arms. Definitely, QA1 is a big company that's helped out a lot with this truck mm -hmm. and a lot of my clients build as well. Their components are, a lot of them are bolt on, so it makes life really easy. Yeah. Even for a fabricator like me, I only had to modify my steering knuckles to get good angle uh -huh. and these arms are way lighter than the factory ones they're a narrow profile so you get to use the angle that i have now mm -hmm. they make a full bolt-on kit coil over rack and pinion everything for these trucks got it you know it i beat the hell out of my truck yes you do <laughs> And 
they can take the abuse, which is a great thing too. Yeah. And they're yeah, made yeah. in America, so you gotta support us, us local boys, you know? I'm with you, bro. Boy, it really is pushed back. And then all the cage work, that's all you, is everything exactly. on this truck pretty much you and your shop doing stuff? All the mechanical, all the fabrication, all the plumbing, everything except for wiring, I did myself. This was the first cage or full welding project I ever did. I broke really? my neck and back in 2017 of November and How? messing around on a Harley, thinking it was a dirt bike, having too much fun and one thing leads to another. Got it. So I was laying in bed rest for about six months, literally every day watching videos and just like, man, I, the only thing I don't know how to do is weld right now. So as soon as I got released to actually go to physical therapy and stuff, I was sitting in neck and back brace in my garage, just welding, practicing. And that's how this oh, truck came dude. alive. Yeah. I taught myself tube work, aluminum work, all the sheet metal work, how to hand cut everything and notch things without like proper tools. Yeah. Like all the bends and stuff. I had to drive 30, 40 miles every day after work or when I had the time to go bend them at my buddy's house, drive back home, test fit them, go back, bend them more, come back, notch them, fit them up and everything. So it was a it was a very big learning process. It's so cool how just fully purpose built this thing is. So originally I pushed the motor back super far because I was thinking autocross cone track and stuff yeah. like that. But even with it being a drift truck, I do think the motor being a little bit further back helps out quite a bit. For the front grip weight, I feel like right above the axles, it's more planted right behind them in a sense now. Uh -huh. And it uh -huh. keeps that front end planted good. What is your exhaust on here? I'm curious, because obviously you can hear this thing's got a pretty beefy cam in it, but the exhaust tone on here, I thought for sure you were six, seven, 800 horsepower truck. Oh, I wish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's those good old neighbor haters from Black Widow. Oh, got it. So, you know, the, they're actually really not big. They're two and a half, and the primary tubes are all about two and a quarter. So my exhaust really isn't all that big. It's pretty simple exhaust, but yeah, those Black Widows make it sound real nice I mean, obviously, so you didn't have these made. This is off the shelf kind of stuff or no? They are off the shelf now. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mike Macy Jack. He's oh. No Sins Customs and Muncie Speed. Muncie Speed, sure. So Jeff over there at Jeff, Muncie. sure, sure. So his partner, Mike now, he makes the more carbon wide body stuff. Got it. And Jeff will still do the stock style carbon parts. Got it. But No Sins, they reached out to me probably three years ago now and kind of kept it a hush-hush thing. So I waited two years to actually see them and get my hands on them. But Mike, he got the first set for his C10. And now I got the second set and they are available for the market now. They make the valance and carbon as well. Mm -hmm. as well as the tailgate, which has a nice custom brass yeah, knuckles in there. Yeah, because your whole tailgate's all carbon, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they even got the dimple dies in there and everything to make it look good. And I yeah. love the cutouts they did in it. Like just adding these details front and rear really make a big, big difference to me. Yeah. So what's the wheel tire setup? I, I got to admit, I was expecting big fat backs and... Definitely. So right now I run a Pro Comp wheel and it's a 17 by nine inch. Uh -huh. And it's still a steel wheel, that way I could still go off track and not have to worry about blowing out a wheel or nothing like that. And then usually I run a 275 40, but since I'm all self endorsed and going out to drift <laughs> events, it's, <laughs> it's costly. This is like the cheapest tire I could find and I had to go down to a 255. Got it. So it is a little bit narrower than I would like, but yeah. they are a stickier compound. So it actually kind of goes hand in hand. They worked well. Well, you must blow through those things quickly, huh? Yeah, if it's a two day event, you're bringing at least 12 tires just for the rear. And it's, that's quick money real, you know? I like to look at it as smiles per miles. We're only here for a short time and might as well enjoy it. I'm with you, dude. I'm guessing you're not pro level, right? Cause no. You, I mean, you might be pro level as far as your driving skills. But... I wouldn't consider it that far yet. Yeah. <laughs> I still believe I learn every time I get behind the wheel. Yeah. Every car has their differences and hopping from a truck that's not meant to drift and then hopping into a purpose drift car, I still learn a lot every time I hop in those cars. Got it. I always marvel at all you drift dudes because the level of, and girls, the level of car control that you have. Yeah, the way I like to think of it is you're in control, but you're still out of control. You're floating the whole time, you know? And that's the part what I'm getting at that trips me out. Like, I'm just a street driving dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't even like when a car breaks loose on me. Like, my favorite car I've ever driven in my life was an R35 GTR. I'd go hit oh, the shit. canyons all the time in it. I'd drive it like I was friggin' Senna or something, uh -huh. you know? Because it's all-wheel drive, you're just planted, planted, planted the whole time. It's going where you're moving it or steering it to. 
loose on me, I get a little uncomfortable. And it's like, that's where you guys get fired up. Is like, cool, we just broke loose. Now put your foot on the gas. Now transition the other I way. Mean, <laughs> it freaks me out, dude. Do I see Curry rear, uh, rear end? Yep, Curry uh, is another one of the companies that helped me out with nice. my program. John Henson over there is a good buddy. John's a good dude, He's man. A great dude, very yep. thankful to have him yep. helping me out all the time. Hold Fast Steering Wheels is another local company. Okay. I'm sure if you've heard of Micah Diaz, another drifter dude, very savage driver, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> man, it is just purpose built. And now you can really see the framework where you can see the stock stuff that's been radically uh, yeah. altered. And I'll be honest, it's not the prettiest because like I said, this was kind of my learning curve and yeah. something that I did, but it was one of those things without this truck, I wouldn't be where I'm at today yeah. and be able to provide in my services and build for other clients nowadays. Yeah, man. I'm curious, how much does this thing weigh as stripped out as it is? So before I went with the wide body kit, when it still had the full metal bed on it and front fenders, it was 3780, so right around 3800. Yeah. And that's with all the framework, all the cage, all the flooring and everything. I know when I took the bed to the scrap yard, it was 550. So the rear alone got about 550 pounds lighter. Right. So I'd guesstimate the truck being around 32. Right. 33 with right. me in it. Which you know? for a drift vehicle is still fairly heavy, right? It's not too bad when no? you think about like a 350Z chassis or like yeah, a Corvette true. chassis. It's true. a very similar true. weight chassis. Yeah. For the most part, it's not bad. And then you consider it's a truck as well. Yeah, it's super light for a <laughs> truck, no doubt. But is for, that a teeny fuel cell or does it just look like it to me? 19 gallons. Oh, what okay. What do you consider night or teeny? I guess because the only time I ever see them, they're already tucked into the truck true, and true. covered in interior and stuff. And Very well. Your interior is just pure, 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 purpose built, go fast. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, dude. You got your pedal box in there from Willwood, another company that I like to support and run yeah. with. Is that whose brakes you run as well on the whole truck? So in the rear, I do run Willwoods. Uh -huh. The front, I didn't only because I adapted like a 07 Silverado front brake setup on it. They had a big setup originally, so I just kind of went with that and ran Save it. Save you a couple bucks to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously from the conversation with you, you're, you're on a budget all the time. I mean, you're yeah. having to deal with budget. I built this truck in my mom's garage on jack stands. So I mean, I was working full time as a mechanic and this kind of was an after thing. It's like after hours, weekends. Yeah, so stuff. from, got I got off around 5.30, got home by 6 p.m. and then till 6 p.m. till midnight, I worked on my truck for two years straight. And then after I built this truck and enjoyed it, social media kind of took off and I felt like there was a chance to start my own business and build more custom cars that I truly enjoy. So how long have you had your own business for now? I've had the LLC now for two and a half years. It's been awesome, dude. I have my own little 800 square foot studio yeah. and I pump out you know, a good amount of cars and a lot of people travel. I'm in San Diego. Some of my clients come from Texas. A lot of them are from LA area. Yeah. So it's very, it's awesome to have that support from people. Yeah, man. I'm going to pop in here. Get in there, dude. Hope you can out. drive it. Shit, am I, kinda, even, am I even going to fit in this damn seat? It's kind of, it's tailored to my side on the driver. I'll say. And then it's got a Holly EFI Metal setup. Oh, cool. So it's, it is a small block Chevy, but with being in San Diego, we can go from the beach to the mountains within yes. 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. So with it being the EFI, it self learns and adjusts itself. I don't have to worry about it not running right up in altitudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if when we go to a track, we change altitudes drastically, I fire it up, let it run for five minutes and it and learns it itself. It figures it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a beautiful system for these Very older cool, motors. Man. Oh, you do still have your glass in here. Oh yeah, there's glass on there still, both sides. The doors are the only thing I haven't touched yet. So everything else on this thing has been- Yeah, high. all the flooring underneath you, all the seat mounts, all this flooring has been redone. The firewall I did myself, the trans tunnel I did myself. Oh. The cage, this is the first cage I ever did. Really cool, dude. Kept the factory dash. I just gave it a nice little flock kit. <laughs> <laughs> a little nod to the what it once was. Mm -hmm. And then Same. just automated auto gauges, I'm taking it, yeah? Honestly, those are or some cheap like Equus ones from O'Reilly's. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They were the closest ones I could afford at the yeah. time. And I laid them out the same display that the original dash display was on these trucks. So yeah. oiled instruments, all the voltage are in the same spots. And then, of course... Gotta have the hydro. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have that, right? And then this is your to air fuel and stuff. That would be all my live data from Holly. Mm -hmm. So if you turn mm -hmm. that on, I'm sure you're familiar with the systems, but mm -hmm. you'll get all your readings right there. It's great. 
I'm terrible with wiring and this kit that they provide, it's super plug and play. Like you literally just wire up one wire to the fuel pump, ground strap to it, plug all the connectors in where they need to be and simple. And that's it for your key? That's it. And then it switches and Switches for and ignitions. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still got all your blinkers, headlights, all that. Is that what all this is here? Yeah, so Baja Designs is another big sponsor company that supports the truck and the movement right now. Nice. So we run LP6s on the front from Baja Designs and they actually have a street legal edition of those that are DOT approved now. So you get those up for them. And then in the rear, they make a little small RTL light that's actually tucked behind the factory lens. And that's got your running light in it, your brake lights, your and it's blinkers. it's all Baja Designs. All Baja Designs. Nice, man. This thing's cool, dude. I, I, I've been really, like, this has been such a long time coming. I'm so excited to go do what we're going to do now, which is take it out and go. Uh, have some fun with it. Have a little fun, <laughs> man. Hell yeah. I'm so excited about this, dude. Hey guys, real quick, before we go for a drive, we started working with a company recently that I wanted to mention called Ari Appraisal, www.ariappraisal.com. If you haven't had your vehicle appraised, I highly recommend contacting them. $250 flat fee, step-by-step, -step, walk you through it on the website so you have a proper, comprehensive, fully detailed appraisal for your vehicle. Specialty, collectible, custom, or even a basic everyday driving car. Be it for estate planning, tax purposes, all the reasons you need appraisals. So I highly recommend check out Ari Appraisal, www.ariappraisal.com. And now we're gonna go get sideways. Small block V8 just puts a smile on my face, bro. Torky little fuckers. 
I, you know, man, I, I get to drive a lot of different stuff, and I'm pure 100% American V8 gets me fired up. And it's not an LS like everybody has nowadays, you know? Yeah. It is neat to see something different, even though I'm not an LS hater, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, another LS. It's like, when I was a kid, you could have said that about small blocks, because everybody ran small blocks, including a lot of Ford guys, you know? Very true, very true. I mean, it was the engine to use, and then that transitioned, obviously, to the LS, and I, I don't know, bro, I'm, I guess part of it is I'm not a mechanic, I don't build, but I understand enough about LS to know you can make great power if you want to. It's not as expensive as some other components. Everything under the sun's available for it. And they're pretty reliable, too. I get it. Like, why not, you know? Hey, by the way, you guys, at K2, leave this in for me. Keep your eyes out. Sometime soon, we're starting the Autotopia LA podcast channel. We just shot our first one yesterday with our pal Josh Mason. So I'm going to keep mentioning it to get you guys ready because when it comes up, I want you guys to all go sub to that channel so we can start out strong, man. And then we'll have to have you up as a guest on it sometime. I'd love to come up, dude. That'd be a good time. You. How much you said this thing only makes, you don't even know for sure, right? I would butt dyno at around like 300. At the tire? Maybe, at the crank? Maybe at the crank. I, I get in like 400 horsepower vehicles and it's, they move, in my opinion, compared to this. But, I don't know, I could be wrong. If I ever do any motor work or swap it, I'll have to throw this on the dyno. Man, you got it, dude. truck's gonna get dirty, bro. Oh man. Oh no. Or I just save tires. I can always yeah. wash it. <laughs> <laughs> Like an interrupting brake, like I try not to use it unless I need 
need to slow down. It really blows my mind how you have the ability to at any point be sideways and have total control of what you're doing.
<laughs> well, after a long time coming, I can honestly say this, it was totally, totally, totally worth the wait. Far surpassed all of my expectations, and I knew Gabe was gonna throw down, but that was badass, man. So as always, you guys, a big thanks for hanging and watching what we do here, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man, later. <laughs>